which club moss is threatened with extinction. Many club mosses are attractive plants often used as Christmas decorations or in floral wreaths. The species Lycopodium newtons, which is native to Hawaii and is known commonly known as Verwi Ioie, is threatened with extinction and has been placed on the endangered species list. Which club moss is threatened with extinction? Many club mosses are attractive plants often used as Christmas decorations or in floral wreaths. The species Lycopodium newtons, which is native to Hawaii and is known commonly known as Verwi Ioie, is threatened with extinction and has been placed on the endangered species list. What seedless, vascular plant played a role in early photography? Prior to the invention of flash bulbs, photographers used flash powder that consisted almost entirely of dried spores from club mosses of the genus Lycopodium. What seedless, vascular plant played a role in early photography? Prior to the invention of flash bulbs, photographers used flash powder that consisted almost entirely of dried spores from club mosses of the genus Lycopodium. What are gymnosperms and which plants are included in this group? Gymnosperms, from the Greek terms gymnos, which means naked, and sperma, meaning seed. Produce seeds that are totally exposed or born on the scales of cones. The four phyla of gymnosperms are, coniferophyta, conifers including pine, spruce, hemlock and fir. Ginkophyta, consisting of one species, the ginkgo, or maidenhair tree, cycladophyta. The cycads or ornamental plants, and nidophyta, a collection of very unusual vines and trees. What are gymnosperms and which plants are included in this group? Gymnosperms, from the Greek terms gymnos, which means naked, and sperma, meaning seed. Produce seeds that are totally exposed or born on the scales of cones. The four phyla of gymnosperms are, coniferophyta, conifers including pine, spruce, hemlock and fir. Ginkophyta, consisting of one species, the ginkgo, or maidenhair tree, cycladophyta. The cycads or ornamental plants, and nidophyta, a collection of very unusual vines and trees. What is the oldest genus of living trees?
The genus Ginkgo, commonly known as maidenhair trees, comprises the oldest living trees. This genus is native to China, where it has been cultivated for centuries. It has not been found in the wild and it is likely that it would have become extinct had it not been cultivated. Fossils of 200 million year old ginkgos show that the modern day ginkgo is nearly identical to its forerunner. As of the early 21st century, only one living species of ginkgo remains, ginkgo biloba. The fleshy coverings of the seeds produced by females of the species G. Biloba have a distinctly foul odor. Horticulturists prefer to cultivate the male plant from shoots to avoid the odor and mess created by the female tree. What is the oldest genus of living trees? The genus Ginkgo, commonly known as maidenhair trees, comprises the oldest living trees. This genus is native to China, where it has been cultivated for centuries. It has not been found in the wild and it is likely that it would have become extinct had it not been cultivated. Fossils of 200 million year old ginkgos show that the modern day ginkgo is nearly identical to its forerunner. As of the early 21st century, only one living species of ginkgo remains. Ginkgo biloba. The fleshy coverings of the seeds produced by females of the species G. Biloba have a distinctly foul odor. Horticulturists prefer to cultivate the male plant from shoots to avoid the odor and mess created by the female tree. What plant produces the largest seed cones? The largest seed cones are produced by cycads. They may be up to 1 yard 1 meter in length and weigh more than 3.3 pounds 15 kilograms. What plant produces the largest seed cones? The largest seed cones are produced by cycads. They may be up to 1 yard 1 meter in length and weigh more than 3.3 pounds 15 kilograms. What is Taxol? Taxol is a drug used to treat ovarian cancer. It freezes cancer cells early in the process of cell division. When the cells are unable to divide, they eventually die. Taxol is obtained from the bark of the Pacific yew, Taxus brevifolia. A gymnosperm that grows in the Pacific Northwest. Because the Pacific yew is a small tree that grows slowly and is not found in abundance, researchers have synthesized taxol. What is Taxol?
Metaxol is a drug used to treat ovarian cancer. It freezes cancer cells early in the process of cell division. When the cells are unable to divide, they eventually die. Taxol is obtained from the bark of the Pacific U, Taxus brevifolia. A gymnosperm that grows in the Pacific Northwest. Because the Pacific U is a small tree that grows slowly and is not found in abundance, researchers have synthesized taxol. Which conifers in North America lose their leaves in winter? Don redwood trees, metasequoia, are deciduous. Their leaves are bright green in summer and turn coppery red in the fall before they drop. Previously known only as a fossil, the tree was found in China in 1941 and has been growing in the United States since the 1940s. The U.S. Department of Agriculture distributed seeds to experimental growers in the United States, and the Don Redwood tree now grows all over the country. The only native conifers that shed all of their leaves in the fall are the bald cypress. Taxidium distichum, and the large, Larix larcina. Which conifers in North America lose their leaves in winter? Don redwood trees, Metasequoia are deciduous. Their leaves are bright green in summer and turn coppery red in the fall before they drop. Previously known only as a fossil, the tree was found in China in 1941 and has been growing in the United States since the 1940s. The U.S. Department of Agriculture distributed seeds to experimental growers in the United States, and the Don Redwood tree now grows all over the country. The only native conifers that shed all of their leaves in the fall are the bald cypress, Taxidium distichum, and the large, Larix larcina. What are the main features of bryophytes? Bryophytes are generally small, compact plants that rarely grow to more than 8 in, 20 centimeters, tall. They have parts that appear leaf-like, stem-like, and root-like, and lack vascular tissue, xylem and phloem. Most species have rhizoids, a cuticle, a cellular jacket to retain moisture around. Sperm producing and egg producing structures, and large gametophytes that hold onto sporophytes. They require water to reproduce sexually. In nature, they are noted for their intense shades of green. How is yeast utilized in food and beverage manufacturing? Yeast is used in wine making, beer making, and bread making. Yeast converts food into alcohol and carbon dioxide, CO2, during fermentation. In the manufacture of wine and beer, 
The yeast's manufacture of alcohol is a desired and necessary component of the final product. The CO2 is what gives beer and champagne their bubbly effect. Bread making requires the CO2 produced by yeast for certain doughs to rise. Yeasts used in brewing and baking are cultivated strains carefully kept to prevent contamination. What is the relationship between lichens and air pollution? Lichens are extremely sensitive to pollutants in the atmosphere and can be used as bioindicators of air quality. They absorb minerals from the air, from rainwater, and directly from their substrate. Lichen growth has been used as an indicator of air pollution, especially sulfur dioxide. Pollutants are absorbed by lichens, causing the destruction of their chlorophyll, which leads to a decrease in the occurrence of photosynthesis and changes in membrane permeability. Pollutants upset the physiological balance between the fungus and the alga or cyanobacterium and degradation or destruction of the lichens results. Lichens are generally absent in and around cities, even though suitable substrates exist. The reason for this is the polluted exhaust from automobiles and industrial activity. They are beginning to disappear from national parks and other relatively remote. Areas that are becoming increasingly contaminated by industrial pollution. The return of lichens to an area frequently indicates a reduction in air pollution. What is the role of yeast in beer production? Beer is made by fermenting water, malt, sugar, hops, yeast, species Saccharomyces spp. Salt, and citric acid. Each ingredient has a specific role in the creation of beer. Malt is produced from a grain usually barley that has sprouted. Been dried in a kill, and ground into a powder. Malt gives beer its characteristic body and flavor. Hops is made from the fruit that grows on the herb Humulus lupulus, a member of the mulberry family. The fruit is picked when ripe and is then dried, this ingredient gives beer a slightly bitter flavor. Yeast is used for the fermentation process. Making beer is a complex process. One method begins by mixing and mashing malted barley with a cooked cereal grain such as corn. This mixture, called wort, is filtered before hops is added to it. The wort is then heated until it is completely soluble. The hops is removed, and after the mixture has cooled, yeast is added. The beer ferments for 8 to 11 days at temperatures that range between 50 degrees and 70 degrees Fahrenheit, 10 degrees and 21 degrees Celsius. The beer is then stored and kept at a state that is close to freezing. During the next few months the liquid takes on its final character before carbon dioxide is added for effervescence. The beer is then refrigerated, filtered, and pasteurized in preparation for bottling or canning.
Where are bryophytes found? Mosses, liverworts, and hornworts collectively known as bryophytes are often found in moist environments. However, there are species that inhabit almost all environments. From hot, dry deserts to the coldest regions of Antarctica. They are most noticeable when they grow in a dense mass. How do yeasts differ from other fungi? Yeasts remain unicellular that is, as single cells throughout their life. Most species reproduce by budding, others through binary fission or spore formation. Each bud that separates from its mother yeast cell can grow into a new yeast cell. Some yeast cells group together to form colonies. What is the difference between active dry yeast and compressed fresh yeast? Both active dry yeast and compressed fresh yeast are leavening agents. Active dry yeast comprises tiny, dehydrated granules of yeast. Although the granules are alive, the yeast cells are dormant due to their lack of moisture. Because the cells are dormant, dry yeast has a long shelf life. Active dry yeast becomes active when mixed with warm liquid. Compressed fresh yeast is moist and extremely perishable. It must be stored under refrigeration and used within one to two weeks. What are some beneficial uses of the sclerotia of the fungus Claviceps purpurea? The sclerotia of Claviceps purpurea are known as the plant disease ergot. Ergot is used pharmaceutically to produce drugs used to induce labor in pregnant women and to control bleeding after childbirth. Ergotamine, an ergot alkaloid, is used to treat migraine headaches. What seedless, vascular plant played a role in early photography? Prior to the invention of flash bulbs, photographers used flash powder that consisted almost entirely of dried spores from club mosses of the genus Lycopodium. What is the ecological role of lichens? Lichens account for approximately 8% of the vegetation covering Earth's surface. In certain environments, such as regions of tundra, they cover vast areas of land. Lichens delay global warming by consuming significant amounts of carbon dioxide. CO2, during photosynthesis. When they cover the ground, they prevent soil from drying out. In desert areas they are able to capture and conserve the moisture present in fog and dew.
lichens release nutrients, such as nitrogen and phosphorus, which are important in regions with nutrient-poor soils as the nutrients aid tree growth. Lichens are also an important food source for many species of animals, including wild turkeys and reindeer of the Arctic tundra. Birds such as the olive-headed weaver of Madagascar and the goldfinch of Europe use lichens to build their nests. What are gymnosperms and which plants are included in this group? Gymnosperms, from the Greek terms gymnos, which means naked, and sperma, meaning seed. Produce seeds that are totally exposed or born on the scales of cones. The four phyla of gymnosperms are, coniferophyta, conifers including pine, spruce, hemlock and fir. Ginkophyta consisting of one species, the ginkgo, or maidenhair tree, cycladophyta. The cycads or ornamental plants, and nidophyta, a collection of very unusual vines and trees. Is the same strain of yeast used to make lager and ale beers? Two common strains of yeast are used to ferment beer. Saccharomyces carlsbergensis and Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Saccharomyces carlsbergensis, also known as bottom yeast, sinks to the bottom of the fermentation vat. Strains of bottom yeast ferment best at 42.8 to 53.6 degrees Fahrenheit. 6 to 12 degrees Celsius, and take 8 to 14 days to produce lager beer. Saccharomyces cerevisiae, also known as top fermenting yeast, is distributed throughout wort and is carried to the top of the fermenting vat by carbon dioxide, CO2. Top fermenting yeast ferments at a higher temperature, 57.2 to 73.4 degrees Fahrenheit 14 to 23 degrees Celsius, over only 5 to 7 days. Top fermenting yeasts produce ales, porter, and stout beers. What is a fiddlehead? The type of fern typically grown as a house plant is of the diploid, or sporophyte, generation. It is composed of a rhizome, an underground stem that occurs horizontally, which produces roots and leaves called fronds. As each young frond first emerges from the ground, it is tightly coiled and resembles the top of a violin, hence the name fiddlehead. In the life cycles of bryophytes, which is dominant, the sporophyte or gametophyte? In all of the bryophytes mosses, liverworts, and hornworts gametophytes are the most conspicuous, dominant phase. A mat of moss consists of haploid gametophytes. Sporophytes are typically smaller and present only part of the time.
What is the purpose of rhizoids? Rhizoids are a characteristic feature of mosses, liverworts, and hornworts. Rhizoids are slender, usually colorless projections that consist of a single cell or a few cells. They serve to anchor mosses, liverworts, and hornworts to their substrate and absorb water. What is the alternation of generations in plants? All plants exhibit an alternation of generations between diploid sporophytes and haploid gametophytes. Sporophytes produce haploid spores as a result of meiosis. The spores grow into multicellular, haploid individuals known as gametophytes. Spores are the first cells of the gametophyte generation. Gametophytes produce gametes as a result of mitosis. Male and female gametes fuse to form a zygote, which grows into a sporophyte. The zygote is the first cell of the following sporophyte generation. How has plant classification changed over the years? The earliest classifications of plants were based on whether the plant was considered medicinal or was shown to have other uses. Dere Rustica by Cato the Censor 234 to 149 BCE lists 125 plants and was one of the earliest catalogs of Roman plants. Gaius Plinius Secundus, 23 to 79, known as Pliny the Elder, wrote Historia Naturalis, which was published in the first century. The book was one of the earliest catalogues of significant plants in the ancient world. Describing more than 1,000 plants. Plant classification became more complicated as more and more plants were discovered. One of the earliest plant taxonomists was the Italian botanist Cesalpinus, 1519-1603. In 1583 he classified more than 1,500 plants according to various attributes, including leaf formation and the presence of seeds or fruit. John Ray, 1627-1705, was the first botanist to base plant. Classification on the presence of multiple similarities and features. His Historia Plantarum Generalis Published between 1686 and 1704, was a detailed classification of more than 18,000 plants. The book included a distinction between monocotyledon and dicotyledon flowering. Plants The French botanist J.P. de Tournefort, 1656-1708 was the first to characterize genus as a taxonomic rank that falls between the ranks of family and species. De Tournefort's classification system included 9,000 species in 700 genera. The Swedish naturalist Carolus Linnaeus, 1707-1778, published Species Plantarum in 1753. It organized plants into 24 classes based on reproductive features. 
the Linnean system of binomial nomenclature remains the most widely used system for classifying plants and animals. It is considered an artificial system since it often does not reflect natural relationships. During the late 18th century several natural systems of classification were proposed. The French botanist Antoine Laurent de Gesserou, 1686-1758, published Genera Plantarum. The Tome Prodrama System Atis Naturalis Regna Vegetabilis was started in 1824 by the Swiss botanist Augustin Pirem de Candal, 1778-1841, and completed 50 years later. Another genera Plantarum was published between 1862 and 1883 by the English botanists George Bentham. 1800-1884, and Sir Joseph Dalton Hooker, 1817-1911. Charles Darwin's, 1809-1882, ideas on evolution began to influence. Systems of classification during the late 19th century. The first major phylogenetic system of plant classification was proposed around the close of the 19th century. Dinatur lichen plants and family in the natural plant families. One of the most complete phylogenetic systems of classification and still in use through the 20th century. Was published between 1887 to 1915 by the German botanists Adolf Engler, 1844 to 1930 and Karl Prantl, 1849 to 1893. Their system recognizes about 100,000 species of plants, organized by their presumed evolutionary sequence. Systems of classifications were also developed during the 20th century. Some works focused on groups of plants, especially flowering plants, rather than all plants. Charles Bessie, 1845-1915, was the first American scientist to publish a system of classification in the early 20th century. Cladistics is one of the newest approaches to classification. It is often defined as a set of concepts and methods for determining cladograms, which portray branching patterns of evolution. How did the increased level of radioactive dust, cesium-137, in lichens affect the food chain following the Chernobyl nuclear power station disaster? Lichens are a primary source of food for reindeer. Reindeer is commonly consumed by humans that live in regions of tundra. When the accumulated level of radioactive dust present in lichens became so high in the reindeer that fed off of them. The reindeer meat became unsuitable for human consumption. Hundreds of tons of reindeer carcasses were disposed of as toxic waste. What is Taxol? Taxol is a drug used to treat ovarian cancer. It freezes cancer cells early in the process of cell division. When the cells are unable to divide, they eventually die. Taxol is obtained from the bark of the Pacific yew, 
Taxus brevifolia. A gymnosperm that grows in the Pacific Northwest. Because the Pacific yew is a small tree that grows slowly and is not found in abundance, researchers have synthesized taxol. What is the economic impact of fungi? Fungi produce gallic acid, which is used in photographic developers, dyes, indelible ink. As well as in the production of artificial flavoring, perfumes, chlorine, alcohols, and several acids. Fungi are also used to make plastics, toothpaste, soap, and in the silvering of mirrors. In Japan almost 500,000 metric tons of fungus fermented soybean curd, tofu and miso, are consumed annually. Different strains of the rust fungus Puccinia graminus cause billions of dollars of damage annually to food and timber crops throughout the world. How does a plant become a fossil? Fossilization is dependent upon where organisms grow and how quickly they are covered by sediment. Rarely do paleobotanists find the fossil remains of whole plants. Usually only fossilized parts of plants are found. Fossilization occurs in many different ways. Three common methods of fossilization are compression, impression, and molding or casting. Compression fossils are often formed in water, where heavy sediment flattens leaves or other plant parts. The weight of the sediment squeezes out water present in the plant tissue leaving only a thin film of tissue. An impression fossil is an imprint of an organism that is left behind when the organism's remains have been completely destroyed, leaving only the contour of the plant. Fossil molds and casts are formed when animal or plant tissues become surrounded by hardened sediment, the tissue then decays. The hollow negative created by the tissue is called a mold. When fossil molds fill with sediment over time, the sediment often conforms to the contours of the mold, resulting in a fossil called a cast. What is special about the spores of leptosporangiate ferns? Leptosporangiate ferns are the most common ferns in North America. The sporangia of leptosporangiate ferns arise from a single surface cell. Are relatively small and have a delicate stalk and a thin sporangial wall. The small number of spores per leptosporangium is a multiple of four, varying between 16 and 512, most often 16 or 32, in homosporous species. Each plant is able to produce millions of spores because of the large number of sporangia per saurus and the enormous number of sari per leaf. One mature plant of the species Thlypterus dentate can produce more than 50 million spores each season.
How is petrified wood formed? Petrified wood is formed when water containing dissolved minerals such as calcium carbonate, CACO3, and silicate, infiltrate wood or plants. The foreign materials either replace or enclose the organism. So the structural details of the plant are retained. The process takes thousands of years. Botanists find these types of fossils to be very important since they allow for the study of the internal structure of extinct plants. After time passes, the plant or wood seems to have turned to stone because the original form and structure are retained, but it does not actually turn into stone. What is the origin of land plants? Many scientists believe land plants evolved from green algae. Green algae, especially the carpites, share a number of biochemical and metabolic traits with plants. Both contain the same photosynthetic pigment scaridines, xanthophils, as well as chlorophylls A and B. Cellulose is a major component of the cell walls of plants and algae. And both store their excess carbohydrates as starch. In addition, some aspects of cell division, particularly the formation of new cross walls, only occurs in plants and certain carpites, such as species of the genera Serrera and Colechide. What are other examples of lichens assessing pollution? Lichens are used to assess radioactive pollution levels in the vicinity of uranium mines. Environments where nuclear-powered satellites have crashed. Former nuclear bomb testing sites, and power stations that have incurred accidents. Following the Chernobyl nuclear power station disaster in 1986. Arctic lichens as far away as Lapland were tested and showed levels of radioactive dust that were as much as 165 times higher than had been previously recorded. What plant produces the largest seed cones? The largest seed cones are produced by cycads. They may be up to 1 yard 1 meter in length and weigh more than 3.3 pounds 15 kilograms. What are heterosporous plants? Heterosporous plants produce two types of spores microspores and megaspores which develop into the male gametophyte and female gametophyte, respectively. In 1580 the physician Prospero Alpini, 1553-1616, identified that plants exist in male and female forms. What is the oldest genus of living trees?
the genus Ginkgo, commonly known as maidenhair trees, comprises the oldest living trees. This genus is native to China, where it has been cultivated for centuries. It has not been found in the wild and it is likely that it would have become extinct had it not been cultivated. Fossils of 200 million year old ginkgos show that the modern day ginkgo is nearly identical to its forerunner. As of the early 21st century, only one living species of ginkgo remains, ginkgo biloba. The fleshy coverings of the seeds produced by females of the species G. Biloba have a distinctly foul odor. Horticulturists prefer to cultivate the male plant from shoots to avoid the odor and mess created by the female tree. Which bryophytes are most closely related to green algae? Hornworts are more closely related to green algae than to any other group of plants. Hornwort cells usually have a single, large chloroplast with a pyrenoid. Granular, starch-containing body, similar to those of green algae. Mosses and liverworts are like all other plants because they have many dish-shaped chloroplasts per cell. Which club moss is threatened with extinction? Many club mosses are attractive plants often used as Christmas decorations or in floral wreaths. The species Lycopodium newtons, which is native to Hawaii and is known commonly known as Verweioie is threatened with extinction and has been placed on the endangered species list. What is amber? Amber is the fossilized resin of trees. Resin is the sticky material often seen oozing from the trunk of a pine tree. Resin hardens as it dries and is the source of both turpentine and rosin. Resin comes primarily from cowrie pine forests. The translucent material emerges from trees and forms lumps that appear deep orange or yellow in color. These lumps may weigh up to 99 pounds 45 kilograms. The two major deposits of amber are in the Baltic region and the Dominican Republic. Amber has also been found in the central Appalachian region of the United States. Prehistoric insects have been so remarkably preserved in Amber that the pieces still contain the insect's intact DNA. Amber is the only jewel of plant origin. What club moss is called the resurrection plant? Selaginella lepidophila, found in the deserts of the southwestern United States and 170 Mexico, is called the resurrection plant because of its ability to defy severe drought conditions. During periods of drought, this plant forms a tight, dried-up ball. 
when rain comes, its branches expand, become green, and carry out photosynthesis. Why are horsetails called scouring rushes? The epidermal tissue of horsetails contains abrasive particles of silica. Scouring rushes were used by Native Americans to polish bows and arrows. Early North American settlers, who cleaned their pots and pans along stream banks, used horsetails found in abundance in such areas to scrub out their dishes. Why is the yeast Saccharomyces cerevisiae important in genetic research? Biologists have studied Saccharomyces cerevisiae, a yeast used by bakers and brewers. For many decades because it offers valuable clues to aid in the understanding of how more advanced organisms work. For example, humans and yeast share a number of similarities in their genetic makeup. The DNA present in certain regions of yeast contains stretches of DNA subunits that are nearly identical to those in human DNA. These similarities indicate that humans and yeast both have Similar genes that play a critical role in cell function. In 1996 an international consortium of scientists from the United States, Canada, Europe, and Japan completed the genome sequence, all 12,057,500 subunits contained in the nuclear DNA. Of S. cerevisiae. It is the first eukaryotic organism to be completely sequenced. With their rapid generation time, yeasts continue to be the organism of choice. To provide significant insights into the functioning of eukaryotic systems. Which conifers in North America lose their leaves in winter? Don redwood trees, metasequoia, are deciduous. Their leaves are bright green in summer and turn coppery red in the fall before they drop. Previously known only as a fossil, the tree was found in China in 1941 and has been growing in the United States since the 1940s. The U.S. Department of Agriculture distributed seeds to experimental growers in the United States, and the Don Redwood tree now grows all over the country. The only native conifers that shed all of their leaves in the fall are the bald cypress. Taxidium distichum, and the large, Larix larcina. How does light affect the growth of fern gametophytes? Light controls spore germination in ferns. Wavelengths in the red range of the spectrum, about 700 nanometers, induce spore germination. While wavelengths in the blue light of the spectrum, about 400 nanometers, prevent spore germination. Red light also induces apical growth and positive phototroism. Increases the gap phase in mitosis, 
and delays the formation of cell plates during cytokinesis. On the other hand, blue light inhibits these phenomena. Do pine trees keep their needles forever? Pine needles occur in groups, called fascicles, of two to five needles. A few species have only one needle per fascicle, while others have as many as eight. Regardless of the number of needles, a fascicle forms a cylinder of short shoots that are surrounded at their base by small, scale like leaves that usually fall off after one year of growth. The needle bearing fascicles are also shed a few at a time, usually every 2 to 10 years. So that any pine tree, while appearing evergreen, has a complete change of needles every 5 years or less. Do pine trees keep their needles forever? Pine needles occur in groups, called fascicles, of two to five needles. A few species have only one needle per fascicle, while others have as many as eight. Regardless of the number of needles, a fascicle forms a cylinder of short shoots that are surrounded at their base by small, scale like leaves that usually fall off after one year of growth. The needle bearing fascicles are also shed a few at a time, usually every 2 to 10 years. So that any pine tree, while appearing evergreen, has a complete change of needles every 5 years or less. How long does it take to produce a mature pine cone? From the time young cones appear on the tree, it takes nearly three years for them to mature. The sporangia of a pine tree are located on scale like sporophylls that are densely packed in structures called cones. Conifers, like all seed plants, are heterosporous. Meaning that male and female gametophytes develop from spores produced by separate cones. Small pollen cones produce microspores that develop into the male gametophytes or pollen grains. Larger, ovulate cones make megaspores that develop into female gametophytes. Each tree usually has both types of cones. This three-year process culminates in the production of male and female gametophytes. Brought together through pollination, and the formation of mature seeds from the fertilized ovules. The scales of ovulate cones then separate, and the seeds are scattered by wind. A seed that lands on a habitable place germinates, its embryo emerging as a pine seedling. How long does it take to produce a mature pine cone? From the time young cones appear on the tree, it takes nearly three years for them to mature. The sporangia of a pine tree are located on scale like Sporophylls that are densely packed in structures called cones. 
Conifers, like all seed plants, are heterosporous. Meaning that male and female gametophytes develop from spores produced by separate cones. Small pollen cones produce microspores that develop into the male gametophytes or pollen grains. Larger, ovulate cones make megaspores that develop into female gametophytes. Each tree usually has both types of cones. This three-year process culminates in the production of male and female gametophytes. Brought together through pollination, and the formation of mature seeds from the fertilized ovules. The scales of ovulate cones then separate, and the seeds are scattered by wind. A seed that lands on a habitable place germinates, its embryo emerging as a pine seedling. Is hemlock poisonous? There are two species known commonly as hemlock. Conium maculatum and Tsuga canadensis. Conium maculatum is a weedy plant, and all parts of it are poisonous. In ancient times, minimal doses of the plant were used to relieve pain. Although there was a great risk of poisoning from this form of treatment, Conium maculatum was also used to carry out death sentences in ancient times. The Greek philosopher Socrates was condemned to death and sentenced to drink a potion made from hemlock. The poisonous species should not be confused with Tsuga canadensis. A member of the evergreen family. The leaves of T. canadensis are not poisonous and are often used to make tea. Is hemlock poisonous? There are two species known commonly as hemlock, Conium maculatum and Tsuga canadensis. Conium maculatum is a weedy plant, and all parts of it are poisonous. In ancient times minimal doses of the plant were used to relieve pain. Although there was a great risk of poisoning from this form of treatment. Conium maculatum was also used to carry out death sentences in ancient times. The Greek philosopher Socrates was condemned to death and sentenced to drink a potion made from hemlock. The poisonous species should not be confused with Tsuga canadensis. A member of the evergreen family. The leaves of T. canadensis are not poisonous and are often used to make tea. Are giant redwood trees found only in California? Although redwoods extend somewhat into southern Oregon. The vast majority of giant redwoods are found in California. The closest relative to this form of redwood is the Japanese cedar found in regions of Asia. This tree grows to a height of 150 feet 45.7 meters, with a circumference of 25 feet 7.6 meters. There are two species of the genus Sequoia, which are commonly known as the redwood and big tree. Both can be seen in either Redwood National Park or Sequoia National Park. At the latter park, the most impressive tree is known as the General Sherman tree. 
it is 272 feet 83 meters tall, has a diameter of 32 feet 9.75 meters, and a circumference of 101 feet 30.8 meters. The weight of the tree is estimated to be more than 6,000 tons. Other trees found in Sequoia National Park exceed 300 feet 91.4 meters in height but are more slender. The General Sherman tree is about 4,000 years old, the oldest living thing next to the bristle cone pine. Approximately 150 million years ago these giant trees were widespread across the northern hemisphere. While the size of these giant trees implies that they are composed of very strong wood. The opposite is true. The wood is useless as timber because it is brittle and shatters into splintering. Irregular pieces when struck. Perhaps the weakness of the wood is why so many of these giant trees still survive and have not been harvested by the logging industry. Are giant redwood trees found only in California? Although redwoods extend somewhat into southern Oregon. The vast majority of giant redwoods are found in California. The closest relative to this form of redwood is the Japanese cedar found in regions of Asia. This tree grows to a height of 150 feet 45.7 meters, with a circumference of 25 feet 7.6 meters. There are two species of the genus Sequoia, which are commonly known as the redwood and big tree. Both can be seen in either Redwood National Park or Sequoia National Park. At the latter park, the most impressive tree is known as the General Sherman tree. It is 272 feet 83 meters tall, has a diameter of 32 feet 9.75 meters, and a circumference of 101 feet 30.8 meters. The weight of the tree is estimated to be more than 6,000 tons. Other trees found in Sequoia National Park exceed 300 feet 91.4 meters in height but are more slender. The General Sherman tree is about 4,000 years old, the oldest living thing next to the bristle cone pine. Approximately 150 million years ago these giant trees were widespread across the northern hemisphere. While the size of these giant trees implies that they are composed of very strong wood. The opposite is true. The wood is useless as timber because it is brittle and shatters into splintering. Irregular pieces when struck. Perhaps the weakness of the wood is why so many of these giant trees still survive and have not been harvested by the logging industry. In what ways are gymnosperms economically important? Gymnosperms account for approximately 75% of the world's timber and a large amount of the wood pulp used to make paper. In North America the white spruce, Pasea glauca, is the main source of pulp wood used for newsprint and other paper. Other spruce wood is used by to manufacture violins and similar string instruments because the wood produces a desired resonance. 
The Douglas fir, Pseudotsuga menziesii, provides more timber than any other north. American tree species and produces some of the most desirable lumber in the world. The wood is strong and relatively free of knots. Uses for the wood include house framing, plywood production. Structural beams, pulpwood, railroad ties, boxes, and crates. Since most naturally occurring areas of growth have been harvested, the Douglas fir is being grown in managed forests. The wood from the redwood Sequoia sempervirens is used for furniture. Fences, posts, some construction, and has various garden uses. In addition to the wood and paper industry, gymnosperms are important in making resin and turpentine. Resin, the sticky substance in the resin canals of conifers, is a combination of turpentine, a solvent, and a waxy substance called rosin. Turpentine is an excellent paint and varnish solvent but is also used to make deodorants. Shaving lotions, medications, and limonene lemon flavoring used in the food industry. Resin has many uses, it is used by baseball pitchers to improve their grip on the ball and by batters to improve their grip on the bat. Violinists apply resin to their bows to increase friction with the strings. Dancers apply resin to their shoes to improve their grip on the stage. In what ways are gymnosperms economically important? Gymnosperms account for approximately 75% of the world's timber and a large amount of the wood pulp used to make paper. In North America the white spruce, Pasea glauca, is the main source of pulp wood used for newsprint and other paper. Other spruce wood is used by to manufacture violins and similar. String instruments because the wood produces a desired resonance. The Douglas fir, Pseudotsuga menziesii, provides more timber than any other north. American tree species and produces some of the most desirable lumber in the world. The wood is strong and relatively free of knots. Uses for the wood include house framing plywood production structural beams pulpwood railroad ties boxes and crates since most naturally occurring areas of growth have been harvested the douglas fir is being grown in managed forests the wood from the redwood sequoia sempervirens is used for furniture Fences, posts, some construction, and has various garden uses. In addition to the wood and paper industry, gymnosperms are important in making resin and turpentine. Resin, the sticky substance in the resin canals of conifers, is a combination of turpentine, a solvent, and a waxy substance called rosin. Turpentine is an excellent paint and varnish solvent but is also used to make deodorants. Shaving lotions, medications, and limonene lemon flavoring used in the food industry. Resin has many uses, it is used by baseball pitchers to improve their grip on the ball and by batters to improve their grip on the bat. Violinists apply resin to their bows to increase friction with the strings. 
Dancers apply resin to their shoes to improve their grip on the stage. What factors have contributed to the success of seed plants? Seed plants do not require water for sperm to swim to an egg during reproduction. Pollen and seeds have allowed them to grow in almost all terrestrial habitats. The sperm of seed plants is carried to eggs in pollen. Grains by the wind or animal pollinators such as insects. Seeds are fertilized eggs that are protected by a seed. Coat until conditions are proper for germination and growth. Seeds are also dispersed by wind or animals. What factors have contributed to the success of seed plants? Seed plants do not require water for sperm to swim to an egg during reproduction. Pollen and seeds have allowed them to grow in almost all terrestrial habitats. The sperm of seed plants is carried to eggs in pollen. Grains by the wind or animal pollinators such as insects. Seeds are fertilized eggs that are protected by a seed. Coat until conditions are proper for germination and growth. Seeds are also dispersed by wind or animals. What is the oldest known fossil flower? The fossil of the world's earliest known flower was discovered in 1986. This flowering plant is from the 120 million year old Kunwara fossil beds found near Melbourne, Australia. The fossil flower was an important find because all the parts of the flower were attached to an intact plant. The fossil resembles a small black pepper plant, less than 1 in, 3 cm, long. Paleobotanists believe that this plant represents an ancestral type of flower. What is the oldest known fossil flower? The fossil of the world's earliest known flower was discovered in 1986. This flowering plant is from the 120 million year old Kunwara fossil beds found near Melbourne, Australia. The fossil flower was an important find because all the parts of the flower were attached to an intact plant. The fossil resembles a small black pepper plant, less than 1 in, 3 cm, long. Paleobotanists believe that this plant represents an ancestral type of flower. What was one of the earliest flowering plants? Scientists do not know for certain which plant was the world's first flowering plant. But many surmise that it was the cattail Tifolatifolia, a species still found today.
although it looks like a reed, it is actually a flowering plant. The flowers are tiny, and the petals and sepals are made up of a few bristles. What was one of the earliest flowering plants? Scientists do not know for certain which plant was the world's first flowering plant. But many surmise that it was the cattail tifolatifolia, a species still found today. Although it looks like a reed, it is actually a flowering plant. The flowers are tiny, and the petals and sepals are made up of a few bristles. What are the two major groups of angiosperms? Angiosperms made up of the largest number of plant species. 240,000, are classified into two major groups, monocots and dicots. The description of monocots and dicots is based on the first leaves that appear on the plant embryo. Monocots have one seed leaf, while dicots have two seed leaves. There are approximately 65,000 species of monocots and 175,000 species of dicots. Orchids, bamboo, palms, lilies, grains, and many grasses are examples of monocots. Dicots include most trees that are non-coniferous, shrubs, ornamental plants, and many food crops. What are the two major groups of angiosperms? Angiosperms made up of the largest number of plant species. 240,000, are classified into two major groups, monocots and dicots. The description of monocots and dicots is based on the first leaves that appear on the plant embryo. Monocots have one seed leaf, while dicots have two seed leaves. There are approximately 65,000 species of monocots and 175,000 species of dicots. Orchids, bamboo, palms, lilies, grains, and many grasses are examples of monocots. Dicots include most trees that are non-coniferous, shrubs, ornamental plants, and many food crops. What are the major differences between monocots and dicots? The seed leaves, also called cotyledons, are different in monocots and dicots. Monocots have one cotyledon, while dicots have two cotyledons. What are the major differences between monocots and dicots? The seed leaves, also called cotyledons, are different in monocots and dicots. Monocots have one cotyledon, while dicots have two cotyledons.
What is the most widely cultivated cereal in the world? Wheat is the most widely cultivated cereal in the world. The grain supplies a major percentage of the nutrients needed by the world's population. Wheat is one of the oldest domesticated plants. And it has been argued that it laid the foundation for Western civilization. Domesticated wheat had its origins in the Near East at least 9,000 years ago. Wheat grows best in temperate grassland biomes that receive 12 to 36 in 30 to 90 centimeters of rain per year and have relatively cool temperatures. Some of the top wheat producing countries are Argentina, Canada, China, India, the Ukraine, and the United States. What is the most widely cultivated cereal in the world? Wheat is the most widely cultivated cereal in the world. The grain supplies a major percentage of the nutrients needed by the world's population. Wheat is one of the oldest domesticated plants. And it has been argued that it laid the foundation for Western civilization. Domesticated wheat had its origins in the Near East at least 9,000 years ago. Wheat grows best in temperate grassland biomes that receive 12 to 36 in 30 to 90 centimeters of rain per year and have relatively cool temperatures. Some of the top wheat producing countries are Argentina, Canada, China, India, the Ukraine, and the United States.